db. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about, we're going to start our chapter on circles, and we're going to start by discussing lines that intersect circles. So we're going to identify tangents, secants, and chords, and use properties of tangents to solve problems. There are a lot of vocabulary words in this section. Here are some of them. There is a lot, as I said. This photograph was taken 216 miles above the Earth. From this altitude, it's easy to see the curvature of the horizon. Facts about circles can help us understand details about Earth. A circle, the de defined definition of circle from our text, is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point called the center. Whoops, how come it's not drawing? my pen here and show you a circle. So it's the set of all the points that are all equidistant from C, the center. So they're all the same distance away from the center. All of these lines that I just drew are the radii. Radius, plural, is radii. The interior of the circle is a set of all points inside the circle. The exterior of the circle is a set of all points outside the circle. All right, here's some of the important words that you need to know. A chord, it's right here. It is a segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. It's a line segment. It has two endpoints. The endpoints are on the circle. A secant is a line that intersects a circle at two points. It's a line. It goes on forever in both directions. It goes through the circle at two points. A tangent is a line that intersects at just one point called the point of tangency. And the point, oh, we already talked about that, that's the point of tangency. So we have chord, secant, and point of tangency and tangent here. In this example, you're supposed to identify what are the chords in this picture, what are the secant, what are the tangent. You already know diameter and radii. Radii is just plural of radius. So the chord is the segment, and there might be more than one here, that touches, has endpoints on the circle. So you have segment KM and also segment JM. And you have a secant. Remember, that has to go through the circle. That would be line JM. It has arrows on both ends. That's a line. Up here, these are segments because there's no arrows. A tangent has to touch the circle at one point. That's line M. That's little m. And a diameter, of course, goes through the circle at its center and has endpoints on the circle, so that is Km. So Km is both a chord and a diameter, and there's lots of different radii here. There's Lk, Lj, and Lm are all radii. In this example, you should try and see if you can name all the chords, secants, tangents, diameter, and radii, and then check your answers. So the chords are Qr, and ST, those are both segments. Chords are always segments. The secant is always a line, and that's line ST. So ST can be both a segment and a line, depending on what you call it. Tangent is UV, line UV. The diameter is segment ST, and the radii are PQ, PT, and PS. The radii always has the center as one of its endpoints. Here's some more terms you need to know. Two circles are congruent circles if and only if they have congruent radii. They have to have the exact same radius in order to be congruent circles. That's really all they need to have in order to know they're congruent. Concentric circles are coplanar circles with the same center. They'll have different radii. And two coplanar circles that intersect at exactly one point are called tangent circles. So you can have them intersecting right here. This is their point of tangency. Whoops. So the tangent line would be here. Or they could, whoops, <laughs> they could intersect at exactly one point where they share a point on each of the circles and the tangent line is in between them. This one says find the length of each radius, identify the point of tangency, and write the equation of the tangent line at this point. So for circle S, well, first they're doing circle R. Circle R is easier because here's the center, the radius, 
goes from there to there, and you can see it's a distance of two units. The other one has a radius of 1.5. It's a little hard to tell that one, but if you go from here straight down, there's one unit and another half unit. You also have to write the equation of the tangent line at this point. The point of tangency is where they just touch each other, which is right here. And the tangent line would be the line that would go through that point, like this. Now that's a horizontal line. Every horizontal line has the equation y equals and then where it crosses. And that horizontal line is crossing at y equals 0, so the equation is just y equals 0. Here's another example. This one already has the tangent line drawn. The radii are easy to find. You just go from the center to the edge. So here to here is one, two, three units. This one has a radius of only one unit. The equation of the tangent line is y equals the point where it goes through the y-axis, which would be y equals negative one. Oh, you're also supposed to say the point in tangency. I didn't say that. The point tan of tangency would be x is 2, y is negative 1, so 2, negative 1. Sometimes the, um, the equation of the tangent line will be a vertical line, and then the equation would be x equals. Let's say we had another circle over here. Touching, here's the point of tangency right here. The the line that's tangent to both of those circles, the common tangent would be right here, and that equation would be x equals the point, the place where it goes through the x-axis, hey, <laughs> I'm going the wrong way, is x equals negative 1. Okay, common tangent is a line that is tangent to two circles. Lines L and M are common external tangents to circle A and circle B. You could also have com common tangents this way. So if a line, there's these theorems, if a line is tangent to a circle, then it is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. So this will be perpendicular then. L will be perpendicular to the radius. If a line is perpendicular to a radius, then the line is tangent to the circle. So if we know that it's perpendicular, then you know that this is a tangent. So the radius and the tangent will be perpendicular to each other. There is a radius that is perpendicular to the tangent. Here's another theorem. If two segments are tangent to a circle from the same external point, in this case A, so then what it means is that AB and AC are both tangent to circle P, that means that AB has to be congruent to AC. So if they have the same external point and they're both tangent to the circle, then these two segments will be congruent. And you can use that to find missing um, parts of the figure, or you can solve for A. In this one, they want us to find HG, which is this length. Well, because they're both tangent to the circle and from the same external point, we can write that 4 plus 2A equals 5A minus 32 and then we just solve for a. So in this case they subtracted 2a first and they get 3a minus 32 equals 4 then add 32 to get 3a equals 36 divide by 3 and a equals 12. Now the question asks for hg so you would plug 12 back in here for a and 4 plus 24 is equal to 28. So you set them equal to each other and then solve for the variable. Um, this is the same thing except we have x over 4, which might look a little strange, but they're going to be equal to each other. And then we have x on both sides. They say to multiply both sides by 4. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it does get rid of... I'm going to rewrite it like this and show you another way to do this. We could subtract x from both sides. And we would have 1 fourth x minus 1 x, which is the same as minus 3 fourths x equals negative 6.3.
At that point, you might say, I'm going to change this to a decimal. And then I will divide both sides by negative 0.75. That's one way to do it. Their way of doing it, you will get rid of the fraction, which is the 4. And then you will have, it'll go like this. And then you would subtract 4x from both sides and get negative 3x, divide by negative 3 to get 8.4. You'll get the same answer either way. There's more than one way to solve equations. And now, once we find x, you have to plug it back in to find rs right here. So it would be 8.4 divided by 4 is 2.1. This is another example. This is very similar to um, the first one we did. So try this one and then pause the video, try it, and then check your work. OK, so on this one, you should have plugged in n plus 3 equals 2n minus 1. Continue solving, and you get 4 equals n. Plug it back in, and you will find that n is equal to, or, uh, rs is equal to 7. Okay, so good luck, and please let me know if you have any questions on this assignment. Have a great day.